Okay, in the first lecture, just to recap, we talked about creating characters using the character diamond to create a character with four conflicting or not well conflicting traits to create an interesting character that readers, viewers, players can connect with. In our last lecture on Thursday, we looked at how to create uh, a story, a plot, as it were, using the three act structure from well, the time of Aristotle. Now, if you have come this far, I'm gonna come and look at something called a scene. And some scenes are so common nowadays that they have a name. The fight scene, the chase scene, the opening scene, just to list the three most common ones, right? That you will find. And if you have a story already, you already have scenes built into your story. So before we go any further, what is a scene? Consider a scene a unit of drama. Your story, its plot points, is created from a sequence of scenes. So the scene is a moment, it's a place in the story where one thing happens. Normally, one thing will happen there. It could be a two-minute car chase. It could be a 10-minute fist fight. But it is still one event. It is still one scene. It is still, it's still one event in one scene to drive your story forward. So inside that scene, which is made up of many different things, which we'll look at uh, now, first off is your setting. The setting is where and when that something happens. And your setting will affect the expectations of that scene. You know? So the scene is that setting. It's the characters, and it's the setting that determines what it is your characters can and cannot do or should not be doing. Uh, simplistically, a fight scene in the urban city slums, you expect a fist fight. It's going to be literally bare knuckle. It's going to be fists and feet, knees and elbows, the odd headbutt. In an ancient Chinese ruin, you expect a kung fu fight of some sort with all that entails from insane, you know, air, aerial acrobatics to some fantastic footwork, grounding, stunting, all kinds of things. But the expectation that your players, readers, viewers will have comes from the setting in the scene. So here you see how it looks when you have a fight on a street corner versus a fight in an ancient Chinese temple. Now, coming into another element here is that you're gonna have to build worlds, right? The world that your plot occupies, that your scenes take place in, that your characters inhabit. Now, world creation is, is a huge thing. Uh, by itself, I could give you a good four or five lectures on just that topic alone. So I'm gonna try not to segue too much into that here. But ultimately, if you know your character, if you know your plot, you will know the scenes that you need to create to sell or tell your story. So pick any one scene in your story and start answering these few basic questions. Where is it? When is it? Who is there? What are the people like? As in, what do they wear? How do they talk? And what time is it? These are the fundamental elements that make up any scene. And when you know your scenes this well, it becomes that much easier to be able to write the rest of the story, including what the characters are doing in that scene, why they're doing it as well. Now, as I said before, a story is irreversible change, right? So that story is told, you know, by on its own can be very boring. But as long as you put it into the correct narrative structure, in this case, the three-act structure that we've already looked at. Your story will become about generally two main characters, the hero, the protagonist, the antagonist. And you'll be telling that story in scenes, going all the way through. Now, what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to change the screen share, and we're going to go take a look at some scenes that I have created previously for, for different projects that I can now talk about. Let's see. Okay. Okay, there you are. Can you guys see a there PDF? Yeah, now we can see it. 
Yes. Okay. So no. Okay. So note to anyone using Zoom: if you have embedded links inside your presentations, Zoom does not like that. <laughs> <laughs> so share screen off and then share screen on again. <laughs> yeah, I have to share screen off and then change to your new file, whatever it is. Okay. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna basically rewind the last, I don't know, ten minutes or so. Oh, great. Okay. So when it comes to creating your scene, right? you have to pick it. So in this case, what you can see now, I hope, God, I hope you can see it. <laughs> we see it. <laughs> we can see it. We can see it. Okay. It's so saying the right thing. See, yeah. So what you can see now here is that this is uh, a scene from a project I worked on. Details I won't reveal on that project. NDA suck. So in this scene, it was something that took place in a restaurant with a bar area, right? So you have some screenshots here. These are from actual real world locations the images from Google so that the artist would have an idea of what to draw, how to reference it, right? And then here you can see different elements as well, table setting, table spacing, decoration, and even the finer details, right? Because at the time when this project was being developed, we weren't too sure what they were going to do with this scene. We were just told, give us a restaurant. And that's the, one of the curses of freelancing is that you get incomplete information. So you wind up having to do a lot of detailed work. So this was a floor plan mock-up that uh, was put together, uh, working with a different software package to give us a full layout of the restaurant, of the scene. So you can see everything from the patio, the restaurant, the kitchen, entryway access, everything. Now, why is this level of detail important? Like I said before, it's so that you know, if you know what your scene looks like, you know what your setting looks like inside your scene rather, then you know what your characters can and can't do in that scene. Part of that again comes back to world building. You know, something set today, uh, you're not going to have people necessarily doing, you know, aerial acrobatics in the, in the uh, restaurant dining room. Or you could be if your world is something like Cyberpunk 2077, where everybody's cybernetically upgraded and can punch through walls and disappear and play, hide in plain sight by vanishing and so on and so forth. So knowing your setting, know your world. And that is what you will use to craft a scene and make it you know, believable within the context of your story and for your characters to be doing whatever it is they're doing. Uh, moving on to uh, what I showed second, the hotel room. This is an actual. This is an actual hotel room. This is a fun research project. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> We've got to spend the night here. Oh my god! So, I, looks like looks like the salted bedroom or something. <laughs> yeah, th this this was the presidential suite at a five star resort uh, hotel in Europe. Sense. So we got to we got to spend one night here doing as part of the experience to be able to write about living like a king you must live like a king fortunately the company paid <laughs> we didn't pay for this so this is what the room looked like the view from the window as you can see here gives you an even better idea of the kind of luxury you're dealing with now what happens in this scene could be anything from the happy couple going out to dinner Eyes Wide Shut, for example, with uh, Nicole Kidman and uh, Tom Cruise from about a decade ago, all the way to maybe the latest James Bond flick or any James Bond flick. So here you can see this is the floor plan of that hotel room. The place is clearly huge, you know. So in this case, events were ultimately confined to just the living room space on the left side. We never actually got around to using the bedroom or bathroom for anything. But knowing the scene, knowing the setting, helped us write the scene, helped us write the interaction and dialogue between the characters to make it believable, not just for the characters, but for everybody else who was involved. Last one here. This was uh, from a bar in the same hotel as the hotel room. So here they wanted shots of what's happening, what, what the bar looks like. This is obviously- uh, the, shots. Yeah, they wanted pictures, so hey. Okay, I admit we took pictures, then we took plenty of shots too after that. So here, getting into in, character, in, right? Hmm? Getting into character. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Building on the research be. expenses. <laughs> Has to be missed. Yep. What a way to so be an actor. Indeed. <laughs> so here you have, you know, other shots of the same location. You know, formatting's gone a bit off, but you know, 
it shows you the kind of also the fine dining, the restaurants, the food, everything. Oh, wow. Yep. So we had it all done. This is research and this is for one scene. Now, as I said, I can't tell you the project, but let's put it this way. All of this research, everything here, these images show you the level of detail that we were required to come up with and that you should have on hand as the writer creating your scene so that you know what can happen within your story and how it affects your characters, what they can do, what they can't do. So if your scenes are solid, right? If your scenes are ultimately solid, then your plot will function. And what your characters do within the, the boundaries of the plot will make sense, will fit. Your readers, your players, your viewers can believe that stuff because it all ties back together to form a cohesive whole or a cohesive world for all of these things to take place in. So here we had to find uh, references, of course, in the same project. What would the characters be wearing, right? So since you're looking at a very high end, we went as far as to find potential, you know, clothing. You now for the female characters, whether the lead character or not, you know, these are just some references again, so that people had an idea of what's expected, you know? what the suits would look like, shoes even, all of this. How does an ensemble, we even went as far here with this one shot, I still remember this, we were looking for how would you put together a group of guys in a suit? We don't know if they're main characters, background characters, but now we know the suits can all look roughly the same, minor differences in the shirt, the ties, right? Maybe somebody with a bag, yeah. different styling, different types of suits. Yeah. All of this comes into play, right? So it goes, it, it gets pretty detailed, but these files are, they will be available on Google Drive. Uh, of course, as I said before, there was running gun battles involved. So here, this is from the same project, but what the enemy grunts, mooks, soldiers would look like, their gear, some shots, weapon references, you know. And that's right at the end here, this was, Okay, this last page, I think this is the last page. This actually is just a list of potential things that could happen in the scene that would not break the continuity of it. You know? So we put in all of these references and gave everything to the client ultimately. And they were happy when it came to their time to put together their entire script. Uh, obviously, this was not just a, a book. This was a script from, this is from a script project but they knew exactly how, because they knew how everything looked and how it would all fit together. Okay, so as I said, these files will be available on the Google Drive uh, for your reference when you need it. So if they are, surprisingly, I've managed to get ahead of myself. I still have plenty of time left. So- I think you still got about 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, I'm ahead of schedule for once. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not scrambling. So, okay. Does anybody have any questions then on uh, what we've talked about in this lecture or in the previous two lectures for that matter? I have one then. Go ahead. Go um, ahead. Let's talk about this lecture itself. So we're talking about scenes. Right. Um, so I'm looking at the document you made, which is fantastic, right? Very detailed, mm -hmm. very thought through. Um, so let's talk about film scripts. So film script, you have okay. your opening okay. dialogue and you have your headers and whatnot, right? Right. The flow. How would that, this document translate to that one? And two, uh, when you make a movie, you have a lot of uh, moving parts. Right? You have your script writer, you have your director, mm -hmm. actors, costumes. Yep. Mm -hmm. So right here in your script, you, in this document research done, you already know the costumes, right? Yes. Um, so how would they come into play in the collaborative process? How detailed you should have in that script? You know, how, what's your process like? You know what I mean? Okay, my process for this is basically, if I, I in, in a perfect situation, I'd be able to sit down with the wardrobe master, the props master, maybe even the effects guys, you know, and I need to figure out what they need, right? And to figure out what these supporting, what these supporting players need, your prop guy needs, what your wardrobe master needs, you then need to be able to sit down with the, normally with the director. Now, these days, it's becoming quite common for people to be actor and director, which is actually a plus, 
because then not only do you get the director's input on what they expect, how things should look and feel, but you also get the actor who can tell you what he needs to do his job effectively. And the thing for actors is that a lot of time, how good an actor is, it's, I would say, 60% the actor and 40% everything else around him. You know? mm. In CGI heavy productions, uh, for example, Edge of Tomorrow, uh, anything from the Matrix franchise, for example, where, and even, uh, what is it, Blade Runner, you know, mm -hmm. where the special effects, the practical effects, well, more special effects and uh, digital effects come into play, the actor mm. becomes more important. So getting their feedback becomes more important as well. Right. Because right. they are the ones that have to bring the scene to life, the dialogue to life. So find out what they think. Sometimes making them happy is as simple as changing the color on a suit slightly. And if that works for them, work with them. Don't fight with them. We're going to be experienced, I see. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, there are good actors and there are actors that are difficult to work with. And some of the most difficult to work with actors, if you meet them halfway, they're actually quite reasonable at the end of it all. No? Any did. other questions? Okay. Okay, so if there are any questions from uh, topics that I covered in the previous two lectures, then since we have the time, for about 10 minutes left. Well, actually, I have a question. Okay, if let's say you want to start writing a scene, where do you actually start first? Do you want to start thinking with the characters putting in a scene? Or you want to start writing the levels of everything, then start thinking about putting in the characters? Like, what is your recommendation steps? Of you're stopping. talking you're talking about for a game project of some kind i'd imagine yes okay um in the context of a game um it's different and it's a bit difficult because it depends on the type of game you're trying to make now i'm going to operate on the assumption it's a narrative heavy game of some kind so to me you'd start the same way you need to know who your characters are you need to know your plot what is happening in your, in your game, what is the story? Is this a story of revenge, which is modern warfare, right? Into the modern warfare franchise, a story of revenge. Are we doing something which is a little more, uh, I don't know, more dramatic, for example, I don't know, or more, more geared towards exploration? You know, what kind of game are you making would determine where to start here? Uh, for example, if you're building a 4X game, something like the Civilization series, characters are not the most important thing in that. You know, more important there is actually a systems. And the systems there would be for, in Civilization, it'd be the civilizations themselves, the empires, uh, the Romans, the Celts, the Byzantians, whatever, they're, whatever you're using. You know, that becomes the forefront. So if your game is narrative heavy and it's a story of and it's still a story involving characters, I would still start with the characters. Because by understanding, again, understand your character, you, under, you put them in your plot, and then inside your scene, you know what that character can do, should not do, and could do. Uh, the simplistic example is always the guy who shows up with a laser cannon suddenly finds himself in, I don't know, medieval Europe somewhere. Once he runs out, he may be able to shoot up stuff with his laser cannon, but what's he going to do once he runs out of ammo? He can't miraculously pull another power cell or battery pack out of thin air. He can't do that. Whereas if he was fighting on his futuristic battlefield, picking up a power cell is feasible, right? So know your character, know your plot, and then you can set up your scene so it works and you can tell something cohesive. If you're going to, that, at least that's how I would structure it. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Uh, I think I have one, and it's regarding game narrative as a whole. So okay. sometimes I, I see a few examples of games that are where the narrative doesn't really blend well with the gameplay, so it often clashes. Okay. So how would you, how would one have, Wait, how would the game designers work around with this to avoid okay. clashing with the gameplay? 
Okay, I think your pro. Um, okay, the first project that comes to mind that when when people talk of this kind of dissonance, um, I think of Mirror's Edge. They had yeah, levels. That's one example. They had yeah, they had levels. They had fantastic uh, parkour free run mechanics, but they didn't have a story. They didn't mm. know what to do with it. So in their case, they got lucky. They got Rihanna Pratchett. <laughs> who was able to take their mechanics and then weave the story around it. But to be able to weave the story to fit the mechanics, she had to first create the character and the supporting cast of them. And once she knew that, she had characters who could, obviously the character has to be a free runner that had, because those were the mechanics. So with games, I think sometimes instead of having to deal with prop and wardrobe and lighting people, you have to deal with the designers of these mechanics. What are these mechanics supposed to do? What are they supposed to achieve? That determines you know, the style of gameplay, the genre of the gameplay, which then affects the character, which again affects then the, the, the plot possibilities. And once you have your plot, again, you can fix the scenes. So with Rihanna Pratchett, she did an amazing job putting together a great story for Mirror's Edge. You said that there are some games you feel that haven't done this very well, Darren. Which ones were you thinking of? Do you have an example in mind? I, I heard there's one instance in Bioshock where, where you're either supposed to save the, the little sisters or harness their power, but the story wants uh, you to go for the harness power thing. The, okay, that, that, that's a different thing entirely. That's not so much bad plot or bad writing. That's more the issue that games face as an interactive yeah. medium when they give the player a choice, yeah, uh, exactly. especially a choice that's going to have huge impact on what happens next. Generally speaking, most games that give you these kinds of choices, if they're going to have a genuine impact on the gameplay, 99% of the time, I'd say the developers try and quietly push you towards one decision because to flesh out every possible outcome and path equally is going to be incredibly difficult and incredibly time consuming and also expensive, depending on what that decision entails, what the, the choice that the player can make entails. In Bioshock, the, it's the one with the underwater city, wasn't it? Rapture. Yeah, I Rapture. Remember what it is, yep. Yeah. So in that case, I think that there was, in my opinion, I think there was a bit of a misconnect, a disconnect there by giving the player that choice. I still think that choice should not, myself, I should not have been given to the players. They should have just been given the path to follow and to experience the story in full. Because as you said, it tries to push you towards harnessing, their, harnessing the power of the little sisters as opposed to freeing them. Yeah, this is the right game, right? I'm not confusing my bias like am I? Yeah, you're correct. Yeah, I hope I'm not yeah. confusing my Bioshocks. There's a lot of them. <laughs> All right. All right. Any other questions? Mm, like, I do have a question. Like, um, yeah. like, say if you're writing a script, or um, how, like, how, how would you how would you describe um, a scene like in the opening line? Because um, no, because like um, often like oftentimes what I've seen in uh, other scripts is that um, the writer would actually go to detail about um, like um, go into detail about the scene itself, like uh, yeah. the smells, the sights, and everything. But like, yeah. do like do you, do you have a particular process when it comes to like um, like um, fleshing out the scene like as an introduction? Okay, uh, one of the key things that you have to look at when script writing, right? First of all, is that you need to, I'm assuming script for a movie. Mm, or movie, script, yeah. Game or any kind of more visually driven medium. Mm -hmm. Start with the visuals. Because that is going to be 90% of the experience. Mm. What they see, because you, you've lost two senses right away. You can't smell anything. You can't taste anything. So 90% of it is going to be visual, what the player or viewer can see on screen. The remaining 10% will come from what they can hear and 
uh, and what they can hear basically because you lose three senses sorry you use taste you lose smell and you lose touch all you have are two senses to play with and humans by nature we process the world around us visually for the most part so that is 90 percent of the experience right there so always start with the visual uh, the right visual finding the right visual will be a challenge to because in that opening scene those of that opening line those opening moments that has to grab your audience's attention you have to hook them in and that is a challenge that is unique to every script every film every tv show every creative project literally so unless you want to get down into more detail i'm afraid i can't give you more than a very general answer i'm afraid mm -hmm. I think I want to add on to that as well, yeah, if if, if you don't mind. Go ahead. Go ahead. If because actually this is also so, this is also I think it's most all of the this is always a challenge for all writers. If let's say you want to introduce a new IP or a new story, mm -hmm. I would say a good thumb practice or or good examples if you want if you want to know how how a if you want to let's say get into a new story. Will be will be like maybe you could go check out mangas for example where the mangakas have to ensure that the first four pages or first earlier pages okay, is yeah. very very interesting so that the, so that the people who read the mangas or read new chapters are like oh this is engaging oh this is cool okay, like the first four the first four pages or and maybe I do not know twelve pages or so mm. depends lah on on certain mangas to be, yeah, to be very very interesting. Makes sense. That actually makes sense because mangas are somewhat more interactive than uh, than a movie or about as interactive as a movie. But a manga would give you a good visual reference right away, definitely, on the scene and to by extension the world that it takes place in. So yeah, a manga oh. could be a good reference if you can find the, the right sort of manga. Don't go looking for something about music if you need something set in the kitchen. It's not really going to match too well in that sense. Yeah, but that's again part of the whole research process and the challenge of finding the right visuals to suit your project, especially in those opening critical opening moments. Okay. Okay, one less than one minute, already. Really. Yep, less than one minute, ladies and gents. But if there are no other questions or comments. Um, thank you very much for class. I hope right. you've enjoyed the series. And if you have any questions or anything, as always, just reach out to me by the comments box on YouTube. Uh, I will, of course, be checking that and replying your questions there.